If you often feel creatively stuck, there is a way around it. These are four things that I've used in the past and I still use now to get myself unstuck when I'm just not feeling creative. But put them all together and they really form an essential toolkit that I can look to utilize on any day where I wanna do some creative work, but I'm really not feeling in the zone. Now, I totally understand the frustration of, of feeling this, the, the, the anger, the just not knowing what to do. Unless you're in it, I can't really describe how it feels. Yesterday, I was deep in it. I just didn't know what to do with myself. I knew that I needed to, to make something to fulfill myself creatively. But I just didn't know how to get there. So I did what I normally do in these situations. And I got out a pad and a pen and paper and I emptied my mind. And that leads us on to the first thing that I think you need to look at. And that is the barriers. What are the barriers to unlocking creativity and how do we remove them? And this is probably the most complex section. And I asked a question on Instagram this week and asked other people what their biggest creative struggles were. And a lot of the themes I'm going to cover as part of barriers actually form part of that. So the first one that came up quite often was comparison. And there's an old quote, comparison is the thief of joy, I think. And in this day and age, we're subject to a lot of people's amazing work all day, every day. And it's just not a healthy way to consume people's work always seeing their best images or their best videos or their best pieces of art if you take any one of those individuals as an individual you're not gonna see their best stuff as often it's because everyone's merged together in these social media platforms so we're always seeing the best of the best of the best of everyone all together so you're automatically going to think everyone out there is doing better than you what we need to do is try and remove that from what we're thinking and just accept that there will be someone out there somewhere probably doing better work than you at the moment. And that's okay. Everyone is at a different stage of the journey. Everyone is doing different things. Try and concentrate on what you're doing and what you're doing alone. And if you do have to compare yourself, compare yourself to past you. By looking at your past work, you can then see how much you've grown over that time frame as a photographer, a filmmaker, an artist. Use that to fuel you. You keep trying to improve yourself and, and you'll continue to move on an upward trajectory. So use comparison in a positive way. Another thing that came up a lot was perfectionism. And this is something I've definitely struggled with over the years and for a long period without even noticing. And I think that's come around from a position of our upbringing and, and what we were told, not only by our parents, but at school, certainly my generation anyway, I think. But there's no such thing as perfect. What might be perfect to you won't be perfect to someone else. So you need to kind of remove that idea of perfect from your head, which I know is easier said than done. Perfectionism is something that people work on for an extremely long time without really getting anywhere. But something that's helped me is trying to just produce something that is good enough. Good enough is, well, it's good enough, isn't it? Um, but using that together with a, like an 80-20 rule of once you're 80% done, that's pretty much good enough. That final 20% of perfecting it will take 80% of the time. You're spending an inordinate amount of time seeking perfection. And in a lot of cases, this perfectionism can stop us from even starting. If we don't start, we don't post anything. We don't show our work. And showing our work is a huge part of how we grow as artists. We've got to show our work to open ourselves to critique in order to improve. So it's kind of a real issue. If, if you're a perfectionist and you don't show your work, you're never going to perfect it because you're not willing to learn from it. I've simplified that a lot and it's making sense to me. Hopefully it is to you as well. I'd say just try and keep in mind that nothing you produce is going to be perfect and you're better off just putting something out there and that kind of leads into the next point which is overthinking this is a big one for me i often get very overwhelmed by overthinking things all the ideas i've got and i just i just don't know what to do so the best thing to do i find is just to get it all down on paper try and break it down into elements and almost sort of look at it and think right what are the priorities and start working on it that way I know that's a bit different to creativity directly, but by emptying our minds in that way, 
um, people often describe as having too many tabs open in our brains, but by just completely emptying your mind, you can work out, right, what are the things I need to concentrate on now and then almost forget about everything else and come to it when you've done those immediate tasks. And that kind of brain freedom it gives us can basically present more room in your head to work more creatively. So the second thing I've worked quite hard on to get past my creative struggles is my mindset. And mindset is a creative, especially someone that works alone a lot of the time, is is a difficult thing to get into. It's quite hard at times when you spend a lot of time on your own to create a positive mindset. There's a lot of negativity out there. And I think trying to steer clear of that in any way you can is probably a really good piece of advice. It's not possible to completely do that, but by avoiding or trying to remove yourself from from kind of negative talk and negative situations and negative news is a really good way of of kind of starting that journey. Another thing that you can do is start your day by consuming something positive or by setting yourself up in a very positive way. This it sounds a bit cringe, doesn't it? But it really helps by kind of watching a really positive motivational video first thing in the morning, that's gonna put your mind in the right state to be positive the rest of the day. And there are plenty of them out there on YouTube. Find someone that inspires you and just watch an eight minute, 10 minute video. And it does have the potential to have a really positive impact. I think a lot of things I've mentioned as well, like perfectionism linking to mindset as well. And self-criticism came up when I asked on Instagram as well. I just think it's really easy to be self-critical, but try and position it in, well, would you, talk to your friend in the way you're talking to yourself and it's very simplistic but I think trying to big yourself up a little better and be your own best supporter that can really help from a positive mindset point of view hopefully you're finding some useful tips in this so far I'd really appreciate it if you are if you give this video a thumbs up and just let me know in the comments below what barriers are there that you face that really mean that you struggle creatively at times because i think if we can kind of talk about them and get them out there that really helps in you know being able to address them as well so let me know in the comments but like so the third major thing that i try and do when i'm struggling creatively is to plan and i know that planning is probably the last thing on creative people's minds sometimes a lot of people wait for inspiration before they can be creative but i don't really believe it always works that way if you're waiting for that, then trying to plan or schedule anything in is going to be difficult. And if, like me, you've got a family, I've got two kids, or if you've got a full-time job and you're trying to create a side from that, or anything else, everyone's got such busy lives. And if you don't plan the time properly and schedule in time for creative time, you will always find something else to fill the time with. That's certainly what I found anyway. So planning it in was really crucial in actually being able to produce anything creatively for me. The key things are when you plan something in, you've got to have discipline and you've got to stick to it. That doesn't matter what the weather's doing. It doesn't matter what else is going on. Obviously life happens and from time to time, your plans do need to change. But 90% of the time, you should be able to stick to the plans that you make. And yeah, if, if you're like, you're a photographer and you want good weather, then that can become more difficult. But I've found that if you go out anyway and just see what happens often you can be presented with amazing opportunities and situations you just you've just got to stick to it just get out there and just put yourself in the position where you are able to create because if you just sat at home doing nothing you've got no chance put yourself in a position where you do have a chance so the fourth thing is probably the simplest one but it's also <laughs> The hardest one is action. Just start, just get started. Just do something, anything, because the minute you start, all of the struggle kind of dissolves. That's the hardest thing to do is just to start anything. And I think it's because we look at the task as a whole and that can often overwhelm us. And I could throw in all sorts of cliches here, like the longest journey starts with a single step the longest journey is start with a single step and it but it's it's true creative pursuits are a marathon and not sprint and 
you're never going to get anywhere unless you actually start. So it is as simple as, right, well, I'm just going to grab my camera and go outside. You've started. That's the, that's the hard bit, but that action in itself is such a simple thing to do. You might not be feeling it, but do it anyway. See where it takes you. What have you got to lose? I think I just need to get the word action and put it on the wall up there or something because... It's simple, but you just you just forget it. The final thing, number five, is to just have fun. And this is a lesson I think I've learned from my kids. And whenever you see them doing anything creatively, they're just enjoying it. They're having it a great time. They've got no plan. They've got no agenda. They're just having fun and they're lost in that kind of creative situation. And as adults, that rarely happens. We've got so many preconceived ideas of the things we're trying to make or the things we're trying to achieve or the things we're trying to do or various stresses and strains of the rest of life and we forget to have fun. So if you go out there with the sole aim of having fun, I think that frees your mind in such a profound way that you can kind of go back almost. It takes work, don't get me wrong, but you can almost go back to that kind of childlike creative state where you just try different things out, try new things out. And I think it's a really valuable thing to do. So maybe next time you've got a free morning or a free afternoon or something like that, just take action and have fun. That's it. Just go out to enjoy it and see what happens. And that's it. The first section obviously was pretty complicated and there were a lot of potential psychological things tied up in it, like the perfectionism and the self-criticism and everything else. And I think if we allow it, they can get a real hold over us and it can be a real problem. But if you try and simplify it down as much as possible, plan stuff in if you need to plan stuff in, take action when it comes to doing that and have fun while you're doing it. I think it certainly worked for me, but I think that will hopefully allow you to get past some of these creative struggles and this can apply to anything in life it doesn't just have to be creative pursuits i think these simple things take action plan have fun maybe that's the key to life it's probably not but it's a nice thought thanks ever so much for watching i'll see you next time if you've got to the end of the video then you're one of the lucky ones that gets to hear this secret message and hopefully that means you've enjoyed what i've had to say and if that's the case please consider subscribing if you aren't already by clicking on my face and i've also put another video up there that you might enjoy watching so i'll see you over there